should do, shouldn't he? Mm. He's not for it. Great disc jockey. So we were talking about uh, the Amoeba 2, the R&I Amoeba 2, and the fact you were just about to go out to the ship. Yes. So Absolutely. when you first went out there, yeah. that wasn't to do the gig initially, it was just to have a look at the ship. Yeah. Um, and while I was out there, I recorded um, a, a trail for test transmissions, you know, saying, uh, you listen to Radio North Sea International, uh, if you've got a reception report, please write in to this address in Switzerland, you know, 160, or something like that. Um, and uh, that was it, and came back home to clear up my business and then uh, get back to the ship at the time they started transmitting. Well, they started transmitting while I was, while I was off before I went back and running these promos. And I remember I was getting phone calls at home because my number was pretty well known because of the disco circuit I was doing. You always advertising for work, no change there. And uh, uh, people were finding up saying, you know, Oh, hello, is it Roger Day? In that voice, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's quite a good impersonation, actually, of uh, that it, person we all know. Indeed. And they said, uh, <laughs> I've heard your voice on Radio Naughty International. And I said, no, not me. I've heard that as well. I said, sounds a lot like me, doesn't it? And, no, I, I wouldn't possibly do that again. You know, that's illegal, you know. Um, I wouldn't, I've, I've been through that. No, I'm not going to take the risk again. Because I, I had thought my phone was monitored anyway, so, which it was actually, uh, which you'll find out in the Electric Palace tonight. Uh, and um, uh, so I denied all that, and of course, then I was back on the boat and uh, broadcasting from the Radio Norsi on the test transmissions and invited a few old friends to, uh, to come and join me, like uh, uh, you know Andy Archer, uh, Mark Wesley, and uh, people like that. Yeah, you didn't invite me. Did you know that I applied at more or less the same time? I know. You had I known you, I would have employed oh. you. Because you, you had it. If, if I'd have heard your tape, you'd have been out there. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I think uh, at that time, I had a long way to go. To, I, I suppose I've improved over the years, but at that time I was terrible. I, I, I listen back to old tapes occasionally of my time on R&I in 1971 through to 73, I think it was. And they were terrible. They were well, terrible. I, I listen back to my Radio England things. I sound like I'm on helium, you know, sort of about 78 rather than 45. Yeah. You know, because you're very nervous. You That's right. To, and, and, and people problem, say, yeah. oh, you haven't changed a bit over the years. I hope I have, you know, <laughs> a bit better than that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I heard you because you joined, because it went off the air, didn't it? I yeah. got the sack, then they, kept, they went off for a couple of weeks, did a deal with Veronica, went off the air came back, uh, I think, just before Christmas, wasn't it, something like that? It, it, I think it went off, because I was out there for a week before it went off the air. Oh, right. I was out there with people like uh, Mark Wesley was around, I remember. And Carl Chris, Mitchell. Yeah, uh, Spangles Modum. Yeah. Chris Carey, he was around. One or two others. Uh, hardly any of them went back. I think Mike Ross was out there. Yes. As well. He came back, but very few of us came back when it reopened. I think it was about March time, I think in 71 that it came back. Because I heard you and I thought, He's good. Oh. No, no, I did. I, and I thought that was know, terrible, Roger, at that time. No, I thought I'd like to work with him. So uh, there you are. and here we are. And here we are. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. So, so are we allowed to ask you why you got fired? Uh, yeah, Larry Tremaine just didn't like me. He okay. uh, because uh, I guess I'm different to what they get in America. I mean, uh, it's a bit slipshod my presentation, isn't it? I mean, I, I fire from the hip, say what I feel, and well, I suppose it's, most. British disc uh, jockeys are the same, aren't they? I mean, well, exactly, but he was used to the slick American jocks, right. you know, much more amusing, yeah. bam, 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 and no, not much personality, just play the music, uh, but I wasn't like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I must have... And then Andy Archer wasn't like that. No, he wasn't. I, I, really? Just to clap. Well, I suppose because I was a programme director, and he was came in as a programme consultant, that awful oh, word, yeah. uh, and I suppose uh, he saw me as getting in the way of him. I remember I came back from holiday, um, when I went on holiday, uh, the Conservatives had just won the election, which was a surprise, because I thought they were going to lose it. And that meant it was good news, because commercial radio was part of their manifesto. For once, politicians stuck to it, which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> um, and I, I was feeling in a great mood. I went to Spain for a couple of weeks, uh, came back, and I always remember I phoned up. And by then, Larry Tremaine had sort of been wheeling and dealing and backstabbing, basically. Uh, and uh, I phoned up and said, oh, when's the tender leaving for uh, the ship? And there's a classic line, one of the, the classic ways I've been fired, for you the tender is never leaving, he said. Oh, so, right. and, and I was gutted because I'd set the station up. Yeah. You know.